Hey, what's up guys? Toogie here, back again with another episode of my Carolina Hurricanes franchise mode series right here on NHL 19. And today, we are ready to begin the 2026-2027 season, but not before finalizing a few changes. We knew when we fell short in the postseason last year that changes would have to be made due to player progression. And of course, we left those decisions, I left those decisions up to you guys in the form of a vote. So let's get right down to business because we have trades to make as a result. Here is the finalized team. Ignore the edit lines for the moment because I don't know exactly what we're going to do. Here is the team as it stands. Goaltending is set, Knight and Jerry, pretty straightforward, right? We knew that. Defensively, though, these are the six. Riley Bean, Byram Middlestat, Power, and Teamander, Vahalati was dead last in voting. So Yerky Vahalati, we will be moving on from. He was going to be an interesting player anyway, very well-rounded, but I think had he had a little bit higher in offensive awareness, he would have been pretty much a mandatory keep. But he was voted off the island. Bowen Byram finished second last in the voting. So to Bowen, this is a season to prove yourself. You have carved out a role as more of a defensive specialist rather than an offensive kind of guy. We need a little bit of both this year. This needs to be a career year from from Bowen Byram on all fronts. As it is, it's likely he'll still be second pairing with Jake Bean. So more than likely to be okay. He stays back. Jake Bean gets the offense, but there should be some offense from him, or at the very least a plus minus should be good. I think we'll play Luke Middlestat with Morgan Riley. Of course, we lost Dougie Hamilton as well to free agency. Forward-wise, it was a big decision, but these are the 12 that we're going with. McKinnon, Svechnikov, Alto, Peterson, Zegra, DuPont, Robertson, Berard, Theo Roche, Allen, Ray, and Pedersen. There is a big name that is missing from the list that you might have noticed already. Whitfield has been voted off the island. Joining him, Alex Turcotte, Nielsen, and Tulipov the fourth liner. We threw Whitfield into the voting. We, of course, left Pedersen, or not Pedersen, but Dylan Peterson, and, uh, God, what is his name? I just totally blanked. That's the Alto, of course, that we acquired last year. Uh, I left them, you know, I excluded them from the voting because I figured, okay, they, they should be staying, obviously. But on a whim, I put Whitfield into the voting, thinking, you know, maybe it'd be another close call like Bo and Byram. But no, from the looks of it, you guys have said that's enough. $7 million player, under 50 points the last two years, maybe in part due to injury. But still, uh, Jamie Whitfield is done. So let's go ahead and make these moves. Now, I don't know with certainty, and I'm also going to be turning Fog of War back on, of course. I don't know with certainty who I'm going to be going out and targeting here. I, I simply don't. I mean, it's likely to be for picks depending on what teams have available, but that's going to be the safest bet. I highly doubt we see too many teams looking to move on from top-notch prospects while we're still in the preseason, but I suppose it could be likely. The thing is here, too, I mean, in terms of, say, goaltending prospects, we could look for one. I mean, we know that we don't really have a, a top-notch goalie in the system, but Spencer Knight, I mean, at least last you know last season, he really started to turn the corner. You know, he arguably got robbed of a Vezina. So, I mean, we might as well take a look. Although, with Fog of War being off or being on, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Like, we kind of know that Jacuizzi might be half decent, but I feel like it is going to be a little bit more difficult to single out a goalie for actually being good. Samuelson's listed as a starter, but that doesn't help us. Honestly, I think if we're going to replace Spencer Knight, it's going to have to be from within the draft. I think it's going to be far too difficult to find a top-notch prospect unless we actually you know, go out and assign a scout and stuff like that. Uh, Ilya Zhamnov was a second-round pick. You'd like to think he'd be worth it, but we just don't know for sure. Steen's listed as an other goalie at 21 years old, which means that rating is pretty low. That is high risk with a good chance of it not being rewarded. Colby McDonald might be worth it, though, from Philly. 
It, it's tough because I almost feel like going out and getting a prospect goalie right now doesn't show much faith in Spencer Knight. I got faith in Spencer Knight mainly because I have to. It's it's looking though like Philly is our only option here, at least in terms of players that we have, you know, we actually have information on. So with Philadelphia, if we wanted to go out and get McDonald, who is signed, that would certainly take us using one of our own goalies to make that happen. Of course, we just signed McPherson, so throwing in Gariba. Honestly, throwing in two goalies, because as it is, we're rocking six when we only need five, would be a good idea. And honestly, I think it would be Fritz Meyer, because Mikanoff's already made it to minor league starter, and he's younger. And Fritz Meyer was going to be the backup this year, but then we decided to go for Tristan Jerry. That would have too many goaltenders. So say we throw in Fritz Meyer. Value-wise, I mean, we're talking, uh, we're, we're talking sending Whitfield to Philadelphia to help make that deal happen. That is scary to send a player of that caliber directly to a rival. I think this deal depends on whether or not they have any top-notch prospects that they're looking to get rid of. And they have no overly high, you know, nothing too ridiculous. I mean, second-round picks, but no first-round picks they're looking to move on from. Do you have anybody of high value that you're looking to move on from? Third round pick, second round pick. Have you guys not had any first round picks? Jesus. Okay, 31st overall, Taro Samalainen, who is listed as an other forward, so you know it's going to be a very low overall. Yeah, Philly, I don't know if this deal is going to work out, man. This isn't looking too good. You guys haven't had too many high draft picks. Yeah, so say goodbye to the idea of trading for a goaltender. It's just the only team that really makes sense there is Philadelphia, and it's it's just not a good fit for us. So in terms of teams looking to move on from prospects, just so that we can you know get a little bit a little bit of an advantage rather than trading for a top prospect that a team doesn't want to move because of course that's going to be expensive as hell. We'll keep looking here. Boston not getting rid of any prospects. Buffalo getting rid of all the prospects or any higher picks. Second rounder and a third rounder, but that's it. No former first rounders on the move, huh? Of course, we don't want any of these players. I mean, yeah, Johnny Goodrow would be pretty sweet, but not for four or more years. He <laughs> wouldn't. Of course, our team is pretty much set. We got a lot of younger players, so cap wise, we're looking pretty good. No real reason to do anything too crazy here. Let's see what we have. A former first rounder, Rory Festerini, but with him being listed as a potential other, that that's too scary for me. That is way too scary for me. Bergfist also listed as a former other. Parse and Kruger listed as other forwards, which means, again, they're in the 60s. Minor league depth. So Chicago are moving on from prospects, but it scares me that you have you know 20-year-old prospects who are still listed as other. That's just not worth the risk to me. A couple more former seconds, or at least one more former second there. There was a sixth rounder. There's a first rounder in Brody, but again, listed under other. I just, I have no desire to really go for a high-risk pick like that. We do have Brent Corso. At least he's a bit younger. He's 19, still listed as an other. And then there's Festerini, who's already listed as a minor league top four. So that could be a landing spot. Columbus could be a landing spot with uh, with Festerini. And who was the other one? Was it Corso? It was Corsto. Corsto. Corso. So those will be really the first two that I marked down. I was like, yeah, they could be worth it. Aside from like, oh, okay, just trade for draft picks. Santini and Ryan O'Reilly, that's not interesting to me. You have Breen. Guillermo Breen. Former third round pick. No thank you. I mean, again, we don't really have the full story on him. And with some of these other guys, again, we haven't seen too many confirmed potentials unless I have just completely overlooked somebody with a confirmed potential. And again, with someone like Festerini on Chicago, it just wasn't looking too good. So I don't think I've missed anybody yet where it's like, yeah, slam dunk player to pick up. At least I don't think I have, like I said. Uh, Florida is just a no for us. Los Angeles has nobody. Minnesota, we have a couple of options. Former third rounder, former second rounder, former first rounder and Ian Quick listed as an other, but again, he's still a younger option at 19 years old. Probably 
worth the risk. We'll mark him down as a player of interest. Montreal with nobody. Nashville. Nashville. No, thank you. Looking to get rid of your garbage. I can see why. Janssen. Do we have any firsts? Pretty much all. Spike Niedermeyer's a great name, but it's going to be a no from me. Former first rounder Raquel. Showing up as an other, but I'm not totally against that. He could be, he could be worth the risk. Uh, nobody from the Rangers, the Sens. That's not looking good. No, that's a whole bunch of nope right there. Uh, Philly, Philly, Philly. Of course, they didn't have anybody else. Pittsburgh, nobody. San Jose. We're running out of options here quickly. Nobody from San Jose. I want to go for. Nobody from St. Louis. Nobody from Tampa. Toronto. Chirana. Ch -ch 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 uh, Forsberg's a former first rounder. Minor league top two at 21. That's not too bad. Valentenko, former first rounder. Listed as an other at 21, which is kind of scary. Minor league depth for the former third rounder. Festerling. A lot. Lancet, a former first rounder. Also listed as an other. I feel like with Lalancet and Forsberg... It's just, it's, I don't know, it's a little bit scary just because they're already in their 20s. But they're also getting rid of McCammond and Korpakari. Now just because they are first rounders, you know, it doesn't mean that we're safe and that they're guaranteed slam dunk pickups, but I feel a little bit better about it. And then Nilsson, two former first rounders in Vegas with Delorme and Pavelka. So I think right now Vegas and Minnesota are my two favorite options to at least you know to at least move our high value players to. Uh, so we're gonna go right back to Vegas and see what the deal is. Yeah, it's gonna be Delorme and Pavelka that I'm interested in. They have cap space as well. This could be the move for Whitfield. They do have the space to get this deal done. Uh, or not. They're going to be just under. Obviously, I'm not going to retain cap. I'll just look to take back somebody. I'm not sure who. Obviously, I'd prefer to be like a depth forward with one year left. Three years left for Jonathan Marcheseau. That sucks. Uh, two years left for Mackinnon, who's making a little bit of money. Now, we do need a depth forward for the year. So that might not be the worst option in the world. Marcheseau, Mackinnon, and Dugan. Hacksaw, Jim Duggan. Uh, do we have anybody on defense? Because I technically need a depth defenseman as well. They have one depth defenseman. He is signed for the year. Setkoff does not get them over the minimum. Although technically he does, but technically he doesn't. And you know how this that works sometimes. So, uh, they already have Dylan Genther, too. They have a decent little core built up. Can I go out and add... Where is he? Did I just go right past him? I did. Oh, God, he has trade value, though. Oh, no. So, that's going to... That's going to cut into the return here. He was a first-round pick of the Sharks. Right now, he's not a bad depth option. But that could mean that we flip him later on to have it work out for us. So Pavelka, Delorme, and McKinnon. Or Makinen, perhaps. And I think from there, we look draft pick-wise. Now, I don't know how close to a deal we are, so this could hurt. But if we try to uh, get a little bit of an insurance policy going here, then again, I'm only allowed to get one pick back. Just remember that rule. Oh, God. Well, you know, if that goes through, I'm not against it, but let's safety net it really quickly with another prospect. I think that'll be the best way to handle it. So De Salvatore was a fourth rounder, Nilsson was a third rounder. Say we just add Nilsson into the deal, we'd have too many players. A first... Two prospects and a depth forward for Whitfield is fine by me. It's the best I can do because I can only add one. Now, does it make sense for Vegas is the question. That's the other move 
that, or the other part of a potential move that we need to sort out, they are already very top heavy. They are very top heavy with some long term contracts set up, including having Jamie Ben signs. Oh, uh, damn. All right, that sucks. Now, see, I would take on Jamie Ben, but I'd get in trouble, I think, for flipping him quickly, which would suck, because technically we already got in trouble with that, I think, last postseason or last offseason. I gotta be honest. I don't know if this deal makes sense from their perspective. Now, they're not limited to the same rules that we have. As it is, they already have some fourth liners. I mean, granted, it's the preseason... As much as I want that deal to work out, I, I don't think it does. I don't think it does. I have to stay to the rules of this series. That deal doesn't make sense for them. They'd be way too top heavy with way too much cap space. Now, for Minnesota, even then it's rough. They just re-signed Kevin Fiala. So they are basically committed to that top six that they have. Oh my god. All right, so we're looking at just Eastern Conference opponents now, and that's if we want prospects back, so that's good. Columbus. I mean, Sawatsky's up. They're going to have to re-sign him. Shepard's up at the end of the year. They have a lot of fourth-line talent. I guess you could argue it because they could move someone like Schmaltz down to the third line. But he would be an expensive third liner. I think Columbus, you can make the argument more than you could make it for the other teams. So I think for Columbus, I'm willing to say, if I'm them, yeah, I take it and then probably try to find a way to move Schmaltz. Whereas with the other teams, it's like, okay, yeah, I take it and then I got to sit there and find a way to move seven other people. So it was Corso. Oh, God, I didn't even realize Corso's 23. So it's Festerini. <laughs> Who's in junior? Oh God! Uh, he was a former fifth pick, though. He should have good value. This should be a fair return, or at least close to it. And we add Columbus's first. Does that go through? Yes, it does. So we will see if that is ultimately the right choice and how good Festerini ends up being. In terms of value, because of Fog of War, they're saying, oh man, Festerini's value. If Festerini is a bust, that is a rough trade for us. But we obviously had very, very few options. Now here's the thing, I don't think the fifth overall pick is going to be a bust. I think we're okay, considering he should be in the 70s, it's already showing him as a minor league top four defenseman. So I think we'll be okay. I'm not too scared by what we just read there. I think we'll be all right. Now from the New York Islanders, we were looking at Raquel, another potential defenseman who has also already been signed to his ELC, which kind of sucks, but that is what it is. So amongst defensemen, again, we're looking at getting rid of Vahalati. And then amongst forwards, we're looking at moving on. Now, Gugnot, shockingly, is still a uh, depth forward, but it was going to be Alex Turcotte as a third-line option. And it's also going to be Nielsen as a third-line option, who's on the way out. And then there was the one fourth-liner, Tulipov. Those are the guys on the chopping block. The Islanders cannot take back that many skaters, which is fine. I didn't really expect to send every single one of these guys to the same team. As a matter of fact, we're probably going to want to take out Turcotte. Maybe try to flip him to the Leafs. Uh, can they take two deals? They can't. Man, they can only take one deal, huh? That kind of sucks. That kind of sucks. Uh, let's add Tulipov back into the mix. We'll take back probably another defenseman. I still need I still need a minor league option on defense down in the AHL. My god, they have all the defensemen in the world. Uh, Alex or Alec Regula is only signed to a one year deal. He's getting paid a little bit of money, but that's fine. We can tack him onto this deal. 
And we'll try to get draft pick back as well. And hopefully stock up on these picks as best we can. So I'm good with this. I mean, we deal Vahalati and Tulipov who have to go for a prospect who might make it in a first round pick. That might not be that good, but it's still a first round pick. Will they take it? No, they will not. Okay, but that, that's a good thing, if anything. It means Regula's value could be quite high. So, actually, here, you know what? I would still prefer to go for that first rounder over settling for a second. So let me add our own third rounder. How close are we now? Still not even close. If the second rounder isn't close, then I'm going to have to give up on that deal. Wow, it's apparently not close whatsoever. And I suppose... Uh, the one thing I didn't do, of course, I always forget to do that, is to make sure it makes sense for them. On the defensive side of things... Jesus Christ, how many fucking defensemen do you need? Oh my god. <laughs> I can't really justify trading them a defenseman. Even if guys like Chris and Falk and, I mean, Dubois signed, Dobson's deals up at the end of it. I mean, I guess I like you could justify it in a way... But also, they'd end up losing someone for free. Forward-wise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, forward-wise, you can argue at least one forward. So, I'm still going to make the argument for Tulipoff. It's just, can I get that deal to go through? As unlikely as it seems like it's going to be. But we can mess around with our draft picks. So it's going to be Tulipoff, a second, and probably a fourth to get Raquel from the Islanders. There we go. So Tulipoff is out. Not a little, uh, not a bad little addition there, as of course the defense could have used a little bit of a boost. And then we'll go talk to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And, I mean, the moves here, of course, Vahalati is gone, so now it's just forwards. Whitfield is gone. Actually, Vahalati's not gone. Tulipoff's gone. So Vahalati's got to go. Forward-wise, again, Gutnyan is safe. It's got to be Turcotte, and it's got to be Nielsen. Aside from that, we are good. Of course, Smith and Bradley are still depth options. So these are the three that have to go. The Leafs have the cap space, but we'll have to take back some actual contracts. Does it make sense? They need, they'd be getting two NHL caliber forwards and an NHL caliber defenseman. Does this deal make sense for them? Forward-wise, I mean... Someone else who could maybe run the top six. It's not... You know, I am going to say that deal makes sense for them from a forward perspective. Just quickly looking at it, that makes sense. And defensively, it makes sense. So the Leafs are actually perfect. Thank God. I didn't want to have to settle for just draft picks. I wanted to get back some uh, ready-made prospects. So we are going to be targeting... It's a risk, but Kari Korpakari, who has an amazing name... Uh, we're going to target Dakota McCammond. And then I think those are the two. Jansevsky would be a bit of a risk. Lalan Set would be a little bit of a risk as well. And then Festerling could have also worked. Again, Forsberg, minor league top two. They have all the prospects in the world right now. I mean, goddamn. Goddamn. I don't think we could possibly get all five. <laughs> but let's just say hypothetically we wanted to try. That's not going to go through. Now here's the thing. I have an extra first round pick now all of a sudden. So hypothetically, would you like Columbus's... Actually, would you like ours? Because I'm going to bet on myself this year. What do you think, Toronto? Oh my god, they would have taken it too. But they want to save salary for our upcoming free agents. Which is bullshit, because Nielsen's on a great contract, and Vahalati's not going to be that expensive. I think I can get this to go through. I just have to add a little bit more value to it to make it, like, extremely worth their while. And I think we can get it to go through. There's no... I wish we could retain salary on someone like Alex Turcotte. What if I add my second rounder next year? What are you thinking then? Still rejected. What if I... And this is crazy. Add Columbus's first rounder as well. Now what do you think? Damn it. So the issue... God, what is the issue? It should go through, really. I guess it's Turcotte. Like, really, Alex Turcotte is apparently the issue that they have there. 
which sucks, but that, that is what it is, I guess. So in terms of value, Turcotte's up there. I'm not really sure if I have anybody that I can add to the deal to make it worth it for them. T-Ball's there, Denny, Pepe, Kessler, and Shen. Now Shen's... Shen again was kind of garbage. But I also view the, oh, we're saving money for prospects thing as kind of garbage. So uh, I'm going to feed this game back some of its own garbage. They can have Kruslake. And we'll see if the whole Columbus first rounder still works. <sighs> Too far off the value. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay, so this isn't going to happen. So we're going to have to choose who we go for. So they're, they're all former first-rounders. Korpakari's 18, other forward. McCammon's 19, other forward. Forsberg is 21, minor league top two. Valentenko's 21, other forward. Lalan sets 20, other forward. So I think we take out the bottom two. And then we see... I won't be able to take out Chris Locke because all three of those guys that we're looking to trade for are under contract. So let me just safety net this with a nice shiny second round pick. Still didn't go through. That's actually kind of surprising. I guess that's how much value Turcotte has who we're just going to have to trade for picks or pick. Are you serious? You're not taking on any salary. <laughs> like, yeah, you're going to have to re-sign Vahalati. That is the dumbest. Oh, that is the dumbest. Come on now. Saving the re-sign our free agents. Fuck you. <laughs> That's my response. Come on. Are you kidding me? All right. Well, screw it then. Every remaining player that we have to trade is going to have to be for a pick. So, Anaheim, do you have... Nope. That's, that's the correct answer. Arizona. Ugh. Again, I can only trade for one draft pick. Boston? Okay, but they don't want to get rid of it. Buffalo? You, you see why I really wanted that deal to go through now? Because now this is just a pain in the ass. Buffalo. Do you need a defenseman? Yes, you do. Perfect. Thank God. Thank God. So I will gladly take a first round pick that I'm eventually going to have to get rid of. What do you think? Vahalati for a first. I'll take it. I will take it again. I'm only allowed to trade for one draft pick per deal to avoid pick hoarding, or at least that's supposed to stop me from pick hoarding. Nothing will stop me from pick hoarding, ever. But, uh, yeah, it's an okay deal. I mean, a former first rounder for a first rounder, they needed a defenseman. You could argue, well, they'd never give up their first round pick. And to that, I say, damn it, you don't like fun. Uh, and then we got to get rid of the forwards. Turcotte is gone, Nielsen is gone, and with that we're good. The question is, who needs forwards? Detroit! Didn't I just make a deal with Detroit? No, they have their first round pick, they just don't want to get rid of it. Do you need forwards? Please tell me you need forwards, for the love of God, need forwards. <sighs> God, you could make the argument they need at least one, but I'm going to try to make this a package deal because screw you, that's why. <sighs> Just Turcotte for a first? Oh, you're beautiful. All right, Alex Turcotte to Detroit for a first round pick as well. If anything, value wise, they got a decent deal. Thank God I didn't send both of them for one pick. And the last deal is Nielsen who we will try to deal to the Schville Predators. The Nashville. And do they need forwards? One, two, three, one, two. I mean, yeah. Let's go with yeah. I can make that justification. Ah. Ah. How about your first rounder next year? Oh my god, okay, I'll take it. Well, we just managed to pick hoard some first round picks, and technically we lost out on value. But damn it, we still got first round picks, so I'm okay with it. So defensively, again, Riley, T Mander, Bean, Byron, Middlestat, and Power. Raquel will be sent down. And 
One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm trying to remember who's in junior out of that. Probably still going to have to sign a defenseman. And forward-wise, we are pretty much golden. We just need a depth forward, actually. And I'm going to play Brett Leeson in that role, even though he's down from a depth forward. We're just going to let those three rip the AHL asunder, much like they did last year. So, and Brett Leeson was great when we called him up last year to uh, to just, you know, or when he was the healthy scratch last year. He did very well. Uh, let me just make sure that there's nobody important to us that's scratched, like Dillman. Uh, make it a Dillman pickle. Uh, so we need probably two AHL forwards that are in like the 60s so that they don't replace anybody. And then defensively, do we want to bring in anybody? Tiervinen is the only scratch that I worry about. But aside from that, we're actually okay with AHL defense because there are guys under AHL contract there. And apparently Mikanoff's better than Fritz Meyer. So we got to go out and sign two AHL forwards. Aside from that, we're good to go. We'll sim probably a month or two into the season just to see what we're dealing with and then make changes from there. So what we will do is we will go to forwards. We'll look at the oldest forwards possible and just try to assume who wouldn't... You know what? Let's just go for Gino and Taves. We'll save them from obscurity at the end of their career. And hopefully they're not better than, you know, than the players that we have there already. Basically the issue is if we go best lines down in the AHL, rather than dealing with the injuries, are they going to take a spot away from a forward? But a lot of those lower end guys anyway, I mean, it wouldn't be that much of a disaster to lose them. So, not player morale. I don't know why it just it didn't go back to the top there. That's very weird. Sevechnikov and Knight listed as leaders. You could have fooled me in the case of at least one of them. But taking a look here, it has Dylan Peterson on the first line. And to be honest, I don't know if I disagree with it. But a one-two punch of McKinnon and Peterson up the middle also sounds really good. But Peterson was great last year. So I don't quite know what I want to do. McKinnon is obviously a decent enough center. And then I probably want Trevor Zegra on a higher line. I think we'll start DuPont on the third line, even though he was great last year when we called him up. Alto or Robertson, Zegra, Alto. Svechnikov, Peterson, McKinnon. I'm okay with starting with that. Uh, I'm going to have to change some positions around at some point, which is fine. I think Theo... Yeah, he is listed so far as a better option there. And then Pedersen, Allen, and then Ray. I don't know. We'll just see if Ray can play center for now. And then defensively, I said, I think I want middle stat with Riley. I think Riley will have the better shot. Byram and Bean. And T-Mander with Owen Power. And we see how good T-Mander really is, considering we just randomly signed him as a free agent. And actually, the one thing we don't have is a depth defenseman at the NHL level. I thought we did. <sighs> I don't know who to go with. Tiervinen's a scratch, so I mean, I could call up someone who's already there, but we don't have anyone who's all that old. We have the two 22-year-olds, that's about it. So we're going to have to sign a depth defenseman for the NHL really quickly, and then we're good to go. I think we'll just leave the team as is for now. Instead of pausing and making a jump cut, it's fine. We'll just leave the team the way it is and then change around uh, positions later because we'll see uh, who's actually you know doing well. Joe Saccone, congratulations. Uh, by default, you are going to be our team's depth defenseman this year in case of injury as we are down to contenders, apparently rather than champion status. Slightly disappointing. Not all that surprising, given the caliber of talent that we've traded away in the last half an hour. But all in all, still in a pretty good spot. I mean, we still don't even know the full story on this team in terms of true overalls for a lot of these guys. I mean, we do, but then again, even during the preseason, players can slightly improve. But... I mean, we know, we know a little bit of the full story, of course, because we turned off Fog of War to uh, give you guys the full picture before we 
uh, decided who to put on the polls to get rid of. But yeah, let's let's sim through at least the first month here. I think that'll give us enough time to start to evaluate who's on this roster, who should uh, who should be on what line, and whether or not someone should be at center or whatever else. I mean, the big question is whether or not we run Nathan McKinnon at center this season, and I just I don't have I don't have an answer to that. I'm not entirely sure, but. We'll see what happens as we're off to a decent start. Of course, the second I notice our record, we lose to Chicago. And an overtime loss to Tampa to follow that one up so we won't get too far ahead of ourselves. Charlotte Checkers not exactly off to a good start. Of course, pretty much every season we expect them to be pretty damn close to contention. I mean, they are that good as Marshall Adamski goes down to injury in Charlotte. So we'll just go best lines, and we'll see if that means if Malkin and Taves are in the lineup. Gaspard Gunyan out with a concussion. Again, he is someone that we could have played at the NHL level this season. We would have been playing him above his role. But because of that, it's like, okay, we can give these other guys a shot. And then, yeah, if they struggle, we have three guys that are on the AHL top line that are no doubt NHL caliber as we're not exactly off to a great start just yet. I'm going to give it one more month here before we call it an episode to see what we're looking like and to see if we have to make any further changes. Dylan Peterson actually goes down to injury, so Brett Leeson is going to be our top-line center for the moment. Admittedly, I'm getting worried about Peterson. He missed a lot of time last year due to injury. He was amazing when he played, and now he gets injured again this season. I mean, it could just be the case of an amazing player who can't stay healthy. He's our Peter Forsberg. <laughs> as Matthew Fierro down in Charlotte gets hurt as well. Peterson is back. I wish you could just say auto like you can in MLB and it just reassigns the guy to the line that he was on. You know, or at least the spot in the lineup he was in before he got hurt. But you know what? That's just a minor critique. Just a minor one. Just a minor critique. My God, all of the injuries for the Charlotte Checkers. Shout out to my neighbor for their loud truck. Don't know if that picked up on the mic. Let's be honest, probably did. Probably did. Uh, Matthew Fierro will go best lines. We're at 10-7-1 coming off of a brutal loss to the New Jersey Devils. Mikanoff was apparently roughed up for the Checkers as well. And we are barely hanging in there. Above 900, or 500, I wish 900. Still at about 500 on the season. We'll see. Oh my god, the menu lag. The menu lag. Why must you do the things that you do? We drop below 500. That is not good. We're back to 500 with that win over Montreal, though. So two games left. Anaheim and Los Angeles. We lose to the Ducks. Can we beat the Kings? Mikanoff is hurt. Oh good, Mikanoff just broke his wrist. Nobody's happier about that than Fritz Meyer. Can we beat the Kings? The answer is yes. So we are at 500 on the year. 12 wins, 11 losses, 1 OTL slash shootout loss. That sees us outside of the playoff structure. Three points back of the Islanders who are in third. Now the good news, at least already, is that Nathan McKinnon is over a point a game. So this might be a bit of a return to form for him. Uh, let's look at the goaltending first. Spencer Knight. <sighs> Spun the coin, and it landed on, nope, you're going to be bad this year. That's what it is. Spin, you know, spin the coin, flip the coin. Tails, bad year. Heads, good, okay year. Good year. Tails, bad year. Heads, good year. Tails, bad year, apparently. Like, Jesus Christ. Tristan Jerry hasn't been great either. So the goaltending has been a massive failure for us thus far. Defensively, middle stat, three points and a plus one. 15 points for Morgan Riley and a plus six. The Byram Bean line has just not worked. So we're going to put Bean on the top pairing with Morgan Riley. See how that works out for us. Byram will be with middle stat. And then that third pairing, Owen Power, six points and a minus four. Team Anderson, 81. And we got him as a free agent. Problem is... Oh my god, yeah, too, he's low elite. Who let go of him? Arizona, what is the matter with you? You let go of a low elite 81 overall defenseman at 21 years old. <laughs> or at 20 years old. Jesus. 
That is absolutely ridiculous. But two points and a minus six on the season for the young T-Mander. Uh, we'll get him on to the other side and hope that that change is enough. Forward-wise, you have Andre Svechnikov at 19 points in 24 games. Centered by Peterson, who is at 20 points in 21 games. And again, Nathan McKinnon, who is leading this team in points. But McKinnon, with that 86 face-off rating, is that too good to not have at center. We have Simon Robertson, 16 points. Minus 4, though, on the year. Get you a quick look at his attributes. Trevor Zegra, I mean, 12 points and a minus 5. Is a bit meh, but a great centerman. And then Essa Alto, 81 in terms of face-off. 16 points in 24 games. So I think that top line's clicking. But it's just, is it worth breaking up McKinnon and Peterson? I don't I don't know. I think, I mean, McKinnon's doing fine there, for sure. Uh, but, of course, we could make changes with the third line, too. I mean, only, only Alto's locked into being a second line forward. You have Cody Berard as a rookie, 10 points, but a minus 10 for the former second-round pick, who still has one hell of a shot. 7 points for Theo, and a minus 5. 14 points, a minus 11 for Mario DuPont. So I think a change has to happen in that middle six. I would probably argue maybe even Trevor Zegra getting dropped just because Robertson's more of a goal scorer. And probably bumping up Mario DuPont because Mario DuPont's off to a tremendous start. So say we go... I know this is the argument where McKinnon you know, could potentially be a center. But... If you think of it this way, think of pretty much this setup right here. That's one of the ways that we could go that I'm not totally against. Although Dylan Peterson should be a top-line guy. I'm not denying that. I mean, otherwise, that's the option right there with Essa Alto at center. And again, he's not all that bad. And then that third line, just because something has to be done, probably go with Theo, Zegra, and Berard. The fourth line, Pedersen, my god, 13 points at a plus 9. That is phenomenal for a fourth liner, the former first-round pick. Centered by Reese Ray, 7 points in a minus 2. And Antti Allenin, who has 12 points in a plus 5. So I'm happy with the fourth line. It's just that third line was struggling a little bit. And the main issue this season, obviously, is the goaltending. So, I mean, I think we make that one change, bumping up Mario DuPont, who last season when we called him up due to injury, he killed it. He had 14 points in 19 games. So I'm intrigued to see if offensively he can really turn it on. Of course, we got him as an absolute steal when we did in that draft. So a couple of question marks. The main thing that's going to contribute to our success or our failure, the main person is Spencer Knight. And we'll see whether or not he is up to the task. And again... Worst comes to worst, changes have to be made. I mean, Gugnot's there at an 82. Uh, Tristan Smith is an 82. And Eric Bradley is an 81. We have players that could fill in if we need to. And uh, Raquel, by the way, is a 76 medium top four. So I'm not exactly regretting that deal with the New York Islanders. Looking like that was the right move to make. So we are going to end it there. Let me know what you think. I mean, again, as far as the players that we moved, we had to move those specific players. But did we do well enough with the returns, mainly just going for first-round picks and prospects where we could? And let me know what you think as well as far as line combinations and whether or not Spencer Knight is the guy. Uh, and I actually just realized, in terms of the comment section, there wasn't anything in terms of, hey, here's your goal for the season. So I'm not sure what the goal for the season is. It's not my choice to see that disappear, but that's just how the comments have been. So maybe that side of this series is disappearing thus far. But I don't know. Let me know what you think. Uh, maybe, you know, again, we have a midseason one, and I think the player to base it off of would probably be Spencer Knight as you get a look at the New Jersey Devils, who, of course, are absolutely killing it. And I say the Devils, even though it's the NHL, you know, the entire league tab, because, let's be honest, this is the Devils League. We're just living in it.